Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today is a really cool episode. I um, I bought this guy, the uh, H100i Corsair um, liquid cooler, I don't know, a week or two ago. And I've just been kind of dreading getting around to it because I know i got to take my computer all apart and everything. But today's the day, so let's get into it. Um, so a liquid cooler is going to have better um, initial temperatures to keep your CPU cooler so I can get a better um, overclock and keep things cool. So let me show you what all I have to do. Here we go. Alrighty, so this is my NZXT S340 Elite um, computer case. And this is what we're going to be removing today. The old um, course Cooler Master, what is it, Hyper 212 Evo air cooler. So in order to do that, there's these four little thumb screws, which I'm going to remove. Sorry about the glare from the lights. I wanted to try to have this all lit up nice and bright. So, go ahead and remove these. And then I'm going to set the camera down and pull off the uh, glass. Alrighty, now that the glass is removed, time to start unscrewing this guy. There are four little screws that hold the tower in place. You can't really see the other one. I'll have to pull off this fan first. Um, but then I'll show that. So I removed the um, CPU cooler fan. As you can see, on this particular motherboard, it's a Z270E. Um, an Asus Strix C270E. Um, let's see if you can see these guys. There's two um, CPU fan connectors here. There's the normal one and the optional one. I'll end up using both of them on the water cooler if I don't have a, um, a little splicer for the two fan cables. But, yeah, so there's just these four screws that hold... Um, this standoff here, they're designed pretty well, they, these screws don't just pop off. So they're all loose now. You can see they're kind of popping over. I'll go ahead and remove those screws. I should be able to pull the bracket off. And then I can't remember exactly what else is holding it on there. I think just the thermal paste at this point. So I'm going to mess around with that for a sec. See how this goes. Okay, so after those screws, it was just thermal paste that was holding it on. And all I had to do is twist it and rock it. And as you can see, there's thermal paste here on the bottom of the cooler. And there's thermal paste there on the, um, the internal heat spreader on top of the CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and clean um, that off and this off and unpackage the water cooler. Let's see how this goes. So the update where I'm at... Right now, I need to pull out these case. Hold on, I guess that done. I got to pull out these case fans here <clears throat> because the width is different. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it there. The width is different, and the width of these ones came with the cooler, and these line up with the radiator. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch those out. That way, the screws go all the way through, and I'm going to pull air in from the outside just like it was before and then I'm going to go ahead and switch out these fans with the stock case fans. Alrighty, I pulled these fans out and I'm going to go ahead and put those fans in. So I have the case fan or the <clears throat> fan cooler fans that came with the water cooler. I just kind of want to show the positioning um, on the top slot here. I was favored towards the bottom and then if you look at the bottom I'm almost bottomed out and the reason why is I wanted to give myself just a little bit of room up here but I want to be as high as I can because once this cord comes in I don't want to be touching my graphics card um, cable and everything. I have that actually zip tied up. It's actually holding my graphics card up because it's a fat one and it likes to sag. So I just wanted to show that positioning. I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, last screws in here. They go all the way through the fan and into the radiator. 
And then after I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and wire everything up. These fan uh, cables are really long, which is good because they have to get, let's see if I can turn my uh, flash on here. Uh, I can't, but either way, they have to get, let me see. Where's, I don't remember where the CPU fan headers are. Oh yeah. CPU fan headers are right here. If you can read that, it says CPU fan and CPU optional. So I'll probably just plug them both into there. And then the plug-in right here says um, all-in-one pump right there. So that's where the pump will go. And then one of the USBs will end up connecting that connector cable too. So this is how everything looks when it's all plugged in. You can see I have these two fans, as I showed before. The front of the case is all sealed up. I can't just look through here now anymore. Um, it's all sealed up. The cords look like an absolute mess right now, but I just wanted to show what everything looks like plugged in, turned on, and running. Um, you can see I have my blue LED strip, my graphics card, the cooler looks pretty cool matched with the motherboard lights and the RAM lights. I think it looks cool actually with all these cords. Kind of looks like a evil uh, mad scientist machine. <laughs> so I just want to show, I, earlier when I was talking about this, I was actually a little wrong with a couple things. So the way this works, um, so I have this cord here which comes all the way down to here to one of my USB um, connectors on the motherboard. And that is, oh, I guess I can, so that um, connects to one of the USBs on the motherboard. That is the controller for this. It, it, everything works off of USB. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in here. So these two cables are actually, um, the connectors for the fans. I thought the fans were going to connect directly to the motherboard. I was a little wrong. So you see number one and then number two there. Um, and those connect via this one cable here. Ah, it's a little hard to see when everything's all blue. But um, you can kind of see it right there. It's connected to the one CPU fan thing. And the reason why that's really important is if the pump fails on power up or one of these fans fails on power up um, when the machine runs through post which is power on self test whenever you start a computer mine has these three LEDs here it has an orange one a white one and a green one um, when you first start it the green one will come on and it'll say hey and it'll it'll the computer will talk to the RAM it'll talk to the CPU it'll talk to the GPU um, and it you know, talks to pretty much every little circuit on here. It finds your um, storage devices. And so what the machine does is it, it, it's trying to talk to everything. The BIOS, the basic input output system, um, basically runs a test, power on self test. It says, hey, let's talk to everybody on the motherboard and make sure that everybody's working and, and they can talk back to us. And so when your power on self test is good, checks all the circuits, everything's running. Um, it'll go ahead and say, cool, I'm talking to all my storage devices, my RAM, my CPU. Then it'll turn um, the white light on, I believe, which is my VGA light, which is the vis visual, visual graphics, whatever. Um, it'll check this separate after everything else. This is the last thing that it checks. Once that's good, it'll go ahead and then um, uh, go ahead and make the handshake between the BIOS and the operating system and it'll go ahead and uh, load the operating system. So, um, this is everything plugged in. This um, water cooler pump is powered via a SATA cable. It's a really weird thing, I think, that the fan header is... Um, attached to the SATA cable. I thought that was the weirdest thing because it's such a like weird bulky, maybe one of these days I'll pop up in the back and show you. Um, so this is the machine running. Let's see if you can hear. I have the fans. I'm going to um, 
let's see, I will show you, this is IQ. This is Corsair's um, software, and this is the, um, you can see the H100i RGB, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you go to the performance tab, you can set different things. When I'm editing video and running video games, I found that I like this RPM here, 2000. I think 3000 is max RPM. Um, so I run it at 75% fixed um, RPM. This keep, keeps things nice and cool. Um, I've been editing video for, you know, about an hour right now. And when I'm not doing anything, everything's on idle, you can see that all the cores are running really, really low. They're down to like the 30s. Um, max, this is rendering actual video only hitting mid 70s, which is amazing because earlier I was hitting mid 80s, maybe even up into the 90s with just the air cooler. So this cooler definitely does its job. Um, I just left the stock thermal paste that was on the bottom of this. I do have some really nice um, thermal grizzly conducta knot or whatever it's called. I have their liquid metal and their high end thermal paste. Um, I wanted to just see how it ran with just this paste, and so what I'm going to do is I will, do, I will run a test where I put their high-end thermal paste um, in between this cooler block and the CPU internal heat spreader, which is the shiny silver thing that you saw. It's basically just a metal heat sink on top of the CPU. They're glued with like high heat silicon. Um, I'll run that test, and then what I'll eventually end up doing is what is called de-litting the CPU where you, you basically pop that internal heat spreader off and then you clean up the stuff that's underneath the internal heat spreader right on top of the CPU and what I'll do is I'll put this liquid metal stuff on there and it's supposed to be way more thermally conductive than the garbage paste that Intel puts on in theirs from the factory and it's supposed to drop the CPU temperatures by like 25 degrees Celsius in some of the best case scenarios. So I might be able to see these temperatures drop down to the um, 50s and 60s of actual 100% CPU utilization, using up most of your RAM, um, running things balls to the wall. So it's supposed to be a really good thing for your CPU. It does void the warranty, but at this point, who cares? you're actually running your machine um, at a higher ca capability than what it came out of the factory. So right now I got this CPU clocked at 4.8 gigahertz at like, it's an adaptive voltage, but I've seen it get up as high as 1.32 or something, which is very, very safe. I think you can go up to 1.4 is what manufacturers spec. There is one thing that I would like to say throughout this process of pulling off the, um, air cooler and putting on this water block I um, this is my first CPU build or first computer build so I probably put a little bit too much thermal paste um, on the internal heat spreader so when I wanted to clean that off before I put this on I actually pulled the CPU off of the CPU socket and then went ahead and wiped it clean in doing that I, I did a little visual inspection on the um, pins in this CPU socket down here and I was reminded of the horror that I felt two years ago when I built this PC because I actually do have two bent pins. I tried to fix one of them and I actually broke one of them. So I ordered, um, I was so lucky I found a replacement board on eBay. It cost about 150 bucks and about $30 to ship here. Um, original cost of this motherboard I think was about $250. So. I'm willing to pay that and I'm going to RMA this motherboard, send it back to the manufacturer and I've seen videos on YouTube, people, you can actually heat up this section of the motherboard and desolder that socket. I actually bought two of them, I'll show you here in a second, but anyway, you can desolder the CPU socket, pull it off and resolder a new socket for the CPU on there that has zero bent pins and then you can actually get full system um, stability even though my machine boots it plays video games it runs fine it's been doing this for two years i do think that one of those pins is an actual pin that um, the cpu uses to i don't know address memory or something it's it's an actual functional pin 
So when I run stress test and bench tests, I am actually failing them almost immediately on core four um, or core seven and eight, I guess you could technically say. So I do know that something is up. Those pins were actually meant to have the CPU address something. It's a very tragic story, but I learned a lesson. I don't know if I did it. I really don't. Um, Cause like the CPUs fit very sun- snugly in those sockets and all you really do is put them in there and clamp them down. Um, I do remember having some issues figuring out how the clamping mechanism worked. Maybe I bent the pins, maybe I didn't. Either way, I'm willing to pay about 100 to $200 to get this motherboard fixed. That way I'll have a um, new motherboard that works properly. I can overclock my CPU. Um, right now it is clocked at, let's see, I'll go ahead and, um, let's see, I'll render a section of this video. Um, I'll render from here to there. Let's see. So in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can push, you can type I and O, and it'll give you an in point and an out point. You can go up to sequence and hit render in to out. Um, I don't think it's going to do it because I already rendered it. But either way, <clears throat> this CPU is clocked at, uh, you can see it there for a second. It's jumping up and down. It's clocked at 4.8 gigahertz. So I want to try to get it up to 5, maybe 5.2 gigahertz. And um, yeah, so one other benefit of doing this liquid cooler swap is if you notice before that um, fan for the air cooler hung out to about right over here, right over one of these dim slots. And the dim slots are what hold your RAM. So these are my two RAM sticks um, right here. So now I can actually get the other two RAM sticks and that'll actually help editing video a lot as well because you can um, allocate more RAM to the program and you know it'll just do things smoother. So that's my video on swapping this out with a liquid cooler. It was a really fun process. Um, I did notice I forgot to put in the washers on these screws. I'll do that eventually because I'm going to have to take everything off of this motherboard. I'm going to have to take my graphics card off, the cooler, my RAM, my solid state drives. Um, I'm going to have to unplug this. I'm going to have to unplug everything from this motherboard, pull it out, put it in a box, and ship it to Asus to have them um, do their diagnostics. So as long as the new motherboard that I get works properly and I can overclock it, I'm totally fine with doing that. I'll have a backup motherboard. Um, I kind of got screwed. This is an i7-7700K. They didn't really make the chipset that this is for these motherboards for more than like two years. Had I have known that, I might have went with an eighth or ninth generation processor because the eighth gen I think were coming out in a couple months when I bought this. Um, this is one of those things that you, you just learn um, when you build a PC. It's just one of the things that, you know, technology is evolving all the time. So it's just one of those learning processes Maybe next time when I buy or I build a PC in four years or something like that, um, maybe I'll buy two of the motherboards just in case. I don't know. It gets expensive. This computer was about $2,000. I will leave um, a link in the description to um, a website called PC Part Picker. It's what helped me do all the research for the components that were compatible. Um, I'll leave a link to that and you can look at my build. Keep in mind, the processor price has gone through the roof. I don't know what it is about this processor. It must be one of the most highly sought after ones right now. Um, they're on the eighth generation and ninth generation i7s. This processor is selling for like $550 right now. Um, I think it was very highly sought after, even though they made the generations after. I think people are still trying to get this exact processor. It works like a champ. Um, I've been able to run any game I throw at it uh, as max as possible as long as my graphics card can handle it. And um, I play a game called Overwatch and with the current clock rate and the current everything set up I'm able to get 90 to like 120 frames per second. It's like butter. Works super smooth. So that's my video of swapping out my liquid cooler um, from my air cooler. I will do another video 
um, when I pull everything out and I put the new uh, motherboard in there and then I will go through the process of <clears throat> how I check the RAM to make sure the RAM is working because anytime you start overclocking a system you are running things at a higher clock rate than the base clock rate you can have a lot more failures so it's recommended by a lot of overclockers to check your RAM make sure your RAM is working flawlessly at the clock rates that it's supposed to um, and that eliminates one layer of failure so that when you start getting um, anomalies I guess you could say in your torture tests or your benchmark tests you can start to rule out, well, it's not my RAM, it's not this, blah, 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 blah. It is the CPU. Um, so at this point, I'm going to blame my failures. Um, I'm running a program called Prime95, which tests the living hell out of your, your whole system, your whole setup at your clock rate. It tests the CPU, the RAM, and um, you know your storage. and everything. It tests everything to make sure that it can run at 100% non-stop you're supposed to run it for at least four hours a lot of people recommend minimum of 12 and a lot of people do it for 24 hours I'm getting failures within the first three minutes and so I'm pretty sure it's because of those pins so hopefully when I get the new motherboard I can um, start at this clock rate at 4.8 gigahertz 4.2 is the base clock rate that this processor is rated at um, 4.5 is the normal uh, like uh, Intel calls it their turbo or boost or whatever clock rate. Um, it basically adds more voltage and runs at a faster rate when you hit load. When you overclock, however, though, you pretty much stay at that high rate all the time. So everything you do in your computer just runs faster. So, yeah, hopefully when I get the new one in, um, I'm able to pass those tests and then that way I can shoot for higher clock rates with stability. Right now I'm a little scared to go any higher than this just because I know there's a point of failure um, and I don't want to stress anything out right now before I have replacement hardware. So that's it. Hopefully you like my video. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell me about your build, tell me about your computers. I love computers. Uh, if you have any questions for me I've been doing a lot of research. I'm learning more and more every day. I don't know that much. You know, this is my first time overclocking a computer. I built this in July of 2017. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.